Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. And it's time for Season 2 of the Pokemon Premier League, Week 8. For the Victorian Shadows, this week we will be going up against the Maryland Torterra Pins. And unfortunately, this is going to be our last battle in Season 2 of the Pokemon Premier League. However, that will not abridge us from bringing as much pain as we can for the opponent. Now, originally in this slot, my opponent was going to be JV, but now instead of the Atlanta Victinis, we're going up against Kelly, who is the coach of the Maryland Torterra Pins. So be sure to go check out his channel. It is very cool and very nice to see him back to uploading. Yet another coach that I used to battle back in the day. It was actually entertaining to me. I went back to our Discord messages, and the last time I messaged Kelly on Discord, because we primarily interacted on Twitter, was in 2016. <laughs> and that was when we were having that battle. So I found that entertaining. Kelly, it's great to have you back, sir. And it's very, very exciting to be battling you again. So be sure to go check out his side of the battle. As usual, there will be a timestamp to jump straight into the action, but stick around and we're gonna go over our team right now. So you can see that Kelly has access to Great Tusk, Latios, Empoleon, Infernape, Grimmsnarl, the Glamora, Feraligator, Thunderous Incarnate Form, Driftblim, and Thwacky. The Terra Captains are Feraligator, which can go Water, Fairy, and Grass, Thwacky, which can go Grass, Steel, and fire. For this matchup, I had a really tough time narrowing down what to bring because he could basically bring any combination of his team against me. And so I went with my normal approach of let's try to narrow down what I think is the most likely and just try to address those things while doing our best to kind of assert our own win conditions in the back. So to that end, this week we bring Mouse Hold. That's right, the mouse is back in the house. Hey, buddy. This is a family place. Put the mouse back in the house. And it is the same set that we brought before. The Population Bomb, Bite, U-Turn, and Tidy Up. I did not want to put Bite on this, but after our previous battle, where I tried to just bring normal moves against my opponent who had a ghost type, that didn't work out too well. So anticipating him to possibly bring the Drift Blim, just because that gives him a really good defensive swap in to several of my Pokemon, but also Drift Blim gets a lot of setup options that can be very annoying, and it has good support capabilities against my team as well. And on top of all that, if it loses its item and it has Unburden, then it can also outspeed my whole team. I thought it was possible that the Drift Blim was coming, so we did put Bite on Mouse Hold, and Mouse Hold is here to just give my team some heavy offensive presence while also being able to swap in and out with U-Turn. The next Pokemon on the squad has to be none other than Walking Wake. It is very likely that this Walking Wake will be my lead. Walking Wake here, I, I knew I wanted to bring it because I really struggled against something like the Great Tusk or um, the Infernape or to a lesser extent, the, the Thwacky or the, or even the, Incar the Thunderous Incarnate, which is his fastest Pokemon. But with Walking Wake, I ended up going with Dragon Pulse, Scald, U-Turn, uh, Flip Turn, not U-Turn. It would be cool if we got U-Turn. Flip Turn and Dragon Tail, with the idea being Empoleon can come in very easily on Walking Wake. The same thing applies to something like the Grim Snarl, or to a lesser extent, a really, really bulky Drift Blim, or a, a Terra Fairy, even for Alligator. And none of those like necessarily the option to be burned by Scald or being swapped out by Dragon Tail. So by bringing some sort of entry hazards to this matchup and having a, a Pokemon that can absolutely take a hit. Use Dragon Tail as something swapping out or just swap myself out. I felt pretty comfortable bringing Walking Wake in this role. I did go with leftovers on Walking Wake, which is unusual for me, but if I were going to be swapping out with Flip Turn and things will have Rocky Helmet or even just entry hazards, I wanted a way to get that HP back. Especially if I lead with it, then he won't necessarily know that I have leftovers early on. After Walking Wake, we have Clefable with a nice and normal defense set. Clefable here is meant to just be kind of a catch-all answer to any physical threats that he has, but it's tough because Great Tusk gets Heavy Slam, which will hit Clefable super effectively. Infernape gets Gunk Shot, which hits Clefable super effectively. Um, and for Alligator, if it boosts up with Dragon Dance, that can be very annoying. Same thing with boosts coming from the likes of the Latios. Uh, Infernape can boost itself, Great Tusk can boost itself, Grimmsnarl can boost itself, so can Drift Blim, Thunderous Incarnate, and 
and the Thwacky. And that's why we're going with Unaware the Fable this week. I went Unaware with heavy duty boots, so hopefully I don't have to worry about entry hazards and I can just kind of have a secondary check to anything setting up in the back. I went with Moonlight, Moonblast, Knockoff, and Stealth Rock because I figured I could hopefully knock off a few items early game. And uh, as soon as I get the opportunity to set up Stealth Rocks, I'm clicking it because at worst that might force his Great Tusk or the Glimora into spinning. And um, I can take advantage of those turns by swapping out or even just getting some HP back. So I wanted to click that Stealth Rock nice and early there. After Clefable, we have our wing conditions this week. So we have Galarian Slow King. Galarian Slow King this week is going to be running Chili Reception in order to enable my Satitan. In addition to Chili Reception, we have Psychic, Sludge Bomb, and Toxic. Uh, with Toxic, I figured that uh, either a Terra Fire Threat Thwacky with Eviolite, Drift Blim, uh, Grim Snarl. All these are swap ins to my Galarian Slowking. And since he had Glamora, I was not confident about my ability to keep up Toxic Spikes. And so I just wanted to be able to throw off a Toxic and, and annoy some things. This is just a pure, especially defensive Slowking. And I did give it Mental Herb. Mental Herb allows me to shake off a Taunt. And I did foresee myself being taunted at some point in this match, especially once he sees a Sasaitan there, he's going to want to stop me from using Chili Reception for sure. So with Mental Herb, I can shake off that Taunt just one time. Thank you very much, Shroomaver, for the idea, because I came up with the whole team, and I was like, I don't know what item to put on this thing. And he was like, well, I'm on a mental herb. And I rolled up that herb, and I put some ink on it, and I wrote down that note. That is not what you thought I was going to say after I said I rolled up that herb, but that is, that's how I, I took note of the set. So after Galarian Sloking, we have Satitan. Satitan here, um, I got to bring it Terra Ground, which is great. I, I, this is the only time I got to bring it in the Terra form. Uh, I put enough speed on my Satitan with a Jolly Nature, just to outspeed Scarf Thunderous. That was the only thing that I was worried about as far as speed tiers go, because with Slush Rush, I outspeed his whole team very easily. And after plus six, I don't really necessarily need Ice Spinner. I can really use Ice Shard. And um, against the things that resist the Ice Shard, they can't take Earthquake. The only thing that I didn't necessarily like about Earthquake is that if he brought Thwacky with um, the Grassy glide and that whole ability chain there where he has grassy surge that could weaken the earthquake but i didn't think he would bring uh, number one i didn't think he would bring thwacky number two i didn't think that it would be very likely that he would have the grassy surge ability because my team really appreciates that i'm gonna get a lot of healing back if he brings grassy surge so i just made a bet I don't think he's going to do that because I didn't want to miss high horsepower. I, for some reason, whenever I play on battle spot, I miss high horsepower a lot. I really don't understand why it's a 95% accuracy move, but I miss it relatively frequently. It's quite strange. Speaking of high horsepower, we have our Zeb Strika in the final slot. This is another alternate win condition because Zeb Strika outspeeds the entire team. And I had fun with this set. Thank you, Icky Sprite, for the idea here. So this is a specially based Zeb Strika with a life warp. It has Supercell Slam. Terra Blast with the Terra type Ice, Volt Switch and High Horsepower. Now with the Terra Blast being a special type Terra Blast, I almost, like he would have to be like an Assault Vest or like massively specially invested Great Test to live a Terra Blast Ice. That still allows me to knock out the Latias with Terra Blast Ice, barring him having a Calm Mine or something like that. And with Supercell Slam and the Life Orb, I don't really need any attack investment. I put a little there after the the speed that I needed just to outspeed the Thunderous, but I can also one shot that Empoleon with the Supercell Slam very easily. Again, two moves that are just barely <laughs> missing out on perfect accuracy, but as long as we hit, we'll be good to go. So that is the Horde for the week. Thank you all so much for watching the Team Builder, and it is time for the battle. I have to say, it feels so good now that I'm in the groove of actually hit record. I don't know why that was so difficult for me before. For Kelly, we can see that the Maryland or Terrapins have Great Tusk, Infernape, Driftblim, Glamora, Thunderous Incarna, and Thwacky. So things that I did not expect to see in this matchup. I did not think that he would go with Thwacky, and I also didn't really expect to see the Glamora and the Great Tusk. I figured he probably only needed one of those removal options. Uh, up against this team, I did like Walking Wake as a lead 
as I could hit everything there, bar the thwacky Terra typing into, I don't know, if it Terra's into like a steel type as I go into the dragon type move, or if it Terra types grass and tries to throw off a really strong move as I am trying to throw off a, a water type move, but also he has to be aware of that I could be carrying the flamethrower as well. So we do have that lead here. And I just decided to just go straight for the flip turn. I thought for sure he would raw swap out here or Terra into probably Terra Steel. If he did have Terra Fire, this would punish that option just a little bit more. And I did make the correct call. We see that Blacky does not have Grassy Surge. It is an overgrow Blacky. And so that means Earthquake will work just fine on Mysa Titan for later on in this battle. Flip turn goes off without a hitch and Based off of that damage, it looks like he has an Eviolite. And I wasn't really sure what he would do. I was worried that he might knock off since he stayed in. I figured he'd either knock off or he would U-turn since he didn't Terra right away. If he went for knock off, honestly, nothing on my team wants to lose its item. <laughs> I could have gone raw out to the Titan maybe. That's the only thing that I really wanted. But if he U-turn, I wanted to be in a position to where I could at least hit something or knock off one of his items too. So I did lose my item when I went to Clefable and right after the knockoff, he also carries Taunt, which is annoying because I, as I planned, if I got the opportunity to go for the Stealth Rocks, I wanted to go for those right away. Granted, he has two spinners on his team, but I at least wanted to pressure him into the option or break focus sashes. So here he gets to taunt me, prevent my Stealth Rocks, and then swap out. I figured since he went for knockoff, I should go for knockoff. And that's my way of saying, Kelly, knock that crap off, you know? He goes out to Glamora, and I just pop the crap out of his air balloon. Busted! <laughs> Functionally, a perfect turn for him, not a very good one for me. I do like breaking the balloon. But now I'm really pressured because of Glamora's um, poison type moves. And when I hit him, the toxic debris ability activated and now there's a layer of toxic spikes on my side of the field. I feel like the swap into Galarian Sloking is obvious, but I also don't want my Clefable to take a sludge wave. And so I go ahead and pull that out that's what she said and he ends up going for stealth rocks so i could have made a little bit more of an aggressive switch there but i am happy that i got rid of the um, toxic spikes early just so they weren't hampering my entire team here he does take the opportunity to set up his stealth rocks and i was like man that's what i was trying to do now it feels like you are just mocking me you're mocking me, aren't you? But no, not really. Just just good plays all around. From here, I did want to go for the Psychic just to pressure him. Galarian Sloking has a little bit of four move slot syndrome and gets so many different coverage moves, but that does work to its advantage because your opponent won't necessarily know what it has. Unfortunately, here I end up trading a Toxic on his Drift Blim in exchange for getting knocked off again. So now my Clefable has been knocked off and my Galarian Sloking have been knocked off and I needed the items on both. I really needed to keep the mental herb on there in case I needed to chilly reception against something later, I did not want to get taunted. He has removed that option, so now I have to be really careful about when I set that up. He pulls a double switch out right here. I was really tempted to go for the chilly reception, but I I just didn't pull the trigger on it. I just hard swapped out into my Clefable, expecting him to go back out into Thwacky. And I didn't want anything else to lose items, but since he went out into Glamora, I was like, Ah, uh, man, he's definitely just gonna launch a poison type attack right here. I don't have anything to damage him. I could set up my own Stealth Rocks, but the switch back into Galarian Sloking really invites the Earth Power from Glamora. I also considered going out into Walking Wake, a little bit more of an aggressive switch, but I knew I could take any hit from Glamora and I could threaten it back with the Scald. Ultimately, I decided to go for Stealth Rock because that would enable me to kind of help even the playing field just a little bit when it comes to the entry hazards and how much we're swapping already. He gets up a second layer or a first layer of spikes in addition to the stealth rock that he has up. Things are looking a little rough on the entry hazards there because you might notice that I don't have any removal this week. No one's really tried to entry hazard stack me too much this season. I have pretty decent removal. I do have tidy up on mouse hold as far as removal goes, but that was more like a sweeping option more so than a a removal option. Tidy Up would also take care of any screens that the Grim Snarl tried to put up on the field, but uh, I do take advantage of him just setting up entry hazards. Now he has two layers of spikes and the Stealth Rock. I go out into Walking Wake and I want to throw off a Scald here 
because from this range of HP, it should one-shot the Glamora, and it also risks a burn if he tries to swap it out to the Flacky or something like that. Glamora barely lives and gets to launch a Sludge Wave, and so now my Walking Wake is missing a lot of his HP. I do anticipate that that was invested a fair amount in HP and into Special Defense, because it, when I ran the Calc, I didn't even need the Stealth Rocks to KO it, so I think he put in a lot of investment there. We do just end up taking out the Glamora, which is perfect for this situation, but Glamora has done its job as well. Since it got up two layers of spikes and stealth rocks, I am heavily pressured to play very carefully for the remainder of this game. Unless I bring in Mousehold and remove the entry hazards, we're just going to be in some trouble. Now after his Glamora goes down, he brings in the Thunderous and we notice that it does not take stealth rock damage, so Thunderous has the heavy booty dudes. And that's great because that means that it doesn't outspeed me, but that also means that he's not locked into a move if he were to say go for Choice Specs Thunderbolt or something like that. Now here, I figured that the swap into Zeb Striker was way too obvious because the electric move is basically free against my team. So I went out to Galarian Slowking expecting him to expect me to bring in my Zeb Striker, but he just goes for Thunderbolt and I didn't know if he knew that Zeb Striker was immune to that or not, and so I take damage on my Galarian Slow King. I would have actually taken that very nicely if not for all those entry hazards that were up. I did consider throwing off a Toxic here, but I figured he would probably stay in an attack. And I was like, well, if that's what he's going to do, then maybe now I should go into Zeb Striker. Because if, if he's just going to throw off another electric move, then now's the time, right? Uh, at worst, I thought he might also go for a Volt Switch, thinking that I'd stay in and attack him as well. I had another opportunity there to go for Chili Reception. But here, I just went up to my Zeb Striker, expecting him to throw an electric move, but he goes for U-Turn. <laughs> I was like, gosh darn it. I thought that I, I just basically was a turn behind on both of those turns. And it was really annoying in the battle because I, I was running a fever and I, I was just like, how am I getting all these turns so wrong? I basically haven't caught any turns correctly thus far in this battle. Now Flacky comes in again. Because he didn't Terra it earlier, I thought it might be a Terra Grass Flacky, weirdly enough, but I know that I can take any hit that the Thwacky goes for, and so I just go for a Terra Ice, and I'm going to go for my own Terra Blast. I figured if he stayed in, he would probably either be Steel or Grass. He goes for his own Terra, and I was dismayed as soon as I saw the red flash that this was a Terra Fire Thwacky. And I was just like, oh, I went for a Terra Blast. Did he go for his own Terra Blast? Because this isn't going to do any damage. I, I literally took more damage from my Life Orb Recoil than I did to him. But he just goes for a knockoff again, gets rid of my life orb. I go for high horsepower and I miss. <laughs> I, I suppose I can't even be sad about that because not only did I call the wrong Terra type on it, but then I got to live because I didn't have my life orb. And so while I could have KO'd him now that he was weak to the high horsepower, I ended up missing there as he goes for U-turn, knocks on my Zeb Strike up. And I was just like, okay, I don't really know what to do here. So he goes back out to the Thunderous after the U-turn. And I was like, all right, I, uh, I think now I need to try to punch some holes in his team. If I go out into Galarian Sloking and go for Chili Reception, I can take any hit he can go for, then bring in my Titan, which is going to take a crap ton of damage from all the entry hazards, but it will at least put me in the Citrus Berry range and then I can hopefully just start throwing off attacks. I probably won't have enough HP to go for Belly Drum at this point because of the entry hazards, but I can at least hit the Thunderous really hard. I can at least hit the Driftblim very hard. Uh, I have Earthquake for the Thwacky. I have uh, Earthquake for the Infernape as well. Um, I can't tear a ground anymore, and so if Infernape has Mock Punch or Vacuum Wave, we're in an issue there. But None of that matters because he just taunts me and because I got my mental herb knocked off earlier, I do not get to tell a bad dad joke and I do not get a chili reception off. So this is what it feels like to either be read like a book or I don't know if I was playing too predictably or if, I don't know, I was just having a fever dream and not click, not thinking my moves through. I don't know. It was very humbling to get so many turns in this battle incorrect. He goes out to the Thwacky, and I was like, all right, let's just see if I can get some damage off on the Thunderous, and so he brings Thwacky into the Psychic. It doesn't really do that much damage to Thwacky because of the Eviolite, and um, I figure he might go for a U-turn here, but 
I didn't really want to stay in because I was in a situation where if I stayed in and I went for Psychic and he went out to a Drift Blim, that could be annoying if he tries to set it up if he had some way to restore his HP. So I went back out to Clefable hoping that I could um, just take like another knockoff if he went for it. He did go for a U-turn and I was like, okay, well, uh, I'm not really sure what he wants to go for right here. And I figured I could get my HP back. And um, what I, I, I don't really know what happened here, guys. I'll be honest. I, I know I was, my thought was, okay, I need to get my HP back so that I can live a heavy slam, right? That's stupid. We'll just go ahead and say that right there. I don't know. I think that was actually honestly a checkmate position because now that he has plus one speed, he outspeeds my whole team and I don't have a way to get up chili reception so that I can outspeed him. So heavy slam wipes out my Clefable. And it was not until I clicked go out walking wake until I, that's when I realized, oh right, he just got plus one speed from the rapid spin. So after the entry hazard damage, I've functionally sacrificed walking wake at this point. And I was like, well, that worked out actually because uh, since his defenses were lower, I can just go out into the Titan and um, hopefully do a lot of damage with the ice shard. So Titan comes out, takes a lot of damage from all of those entry hazards there. I was like, okay. I, depending on if he's bulkier, I actually might be able to live a hit from here. But again, I just completely forgot that this thing gets close combat. I was thinking, okay, if he goes for the headlong rush again, I'm good. And I'm also heavy, so if he goes for heavy slam, I'm good. But he has close combat, so he doesn't need either of those options. So kind of in the end game here, I, I kind of threw it all away, honestly. And I don't, I don't really have a good reason for that. I, I know that I, sh I shouldn't have been battling under the conditions where I wasn't feeling as well, but sometimes you just gotta get in there and get the battle done when you're feeling like that. I've basically had COVID for this whole season, but this is the only battle this season where I would just felt like I got horribly outplayed uh, and that I made a lot of misplays as well. But that being said, I still got to battle Kelly, which was kind of cool. Things that I didn't have on my bingo card for 2024, for sure. So not the way that I wanted to end this season, but we did make it to the end of the season. We lose our final battle in the Pokemon Premier League season two, but this is a very familiar gambit for those of you who have watched me before. I tend to come into a metagame and then do very poorly the first time I'm doing it. And then the next season, because I did so poorly the first time, everyone tends to underrate how I play and that leads to some very fun upsets. All of that said, thank you all so much for watching this battle and watching this season. I would love some feedback on if you all would like a, a little bit of a recap video to the season or um, if you all want to see me do more draft league content. This was fun to do. It's not fun to lose, but it was very fun to kind of knock the, the dust off and get back into battling. I really would prefer an It's Gator approach to coming back to battling after so long, but we cannot all be that powerful or in some of his battles that lucky. But uh, thank you, Kelly, for the battle. I will talk to you all soon and let me know if you'd like to see me do any other draft leagues or I could take a page out of Q the Costa Rican and do battle spot or just random uploads. Like I used to upload uh, theme teams, like I had a persona three and a Persona 4 theme team. I had a Powerpuff Girls team. Let me know. Uh, and I'll probably do a video outside of this, just kind of talking about things generally. Hope you all have a good day. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.